Welcome to Rain Delay. I'm Josh Mordkoff, here with Alex Green and Jesse Freeman, and we're here to give you the latest in sports news and issues. So, first off, guys, we're going to talk about Pee Wee football gone bad. You know, I, I'm sure you guys have heard about this whole scandal in the uh, South Florida Youth Football League in Fort Lauderdale, where there, a bunch of adults are betting on kids' football. <laughs> so what do you guys have to say about this? Well, there's about 30,000 uh, children aged 5 to 15 that play in this league, so it's one of the biggest youth football leagues in the country. And, uh, I mean, it's not the best area, and there's a lot of gambling and a lot of drug use uh, along with that. But I think the worst part about this is that the cops are there, but they don't even stop the gambling. Yeah. But I mean, people are just walking around the, the youth event with alcohol and illegal drugs, and it's mostly run by the drug dealers. It's really not a good situation down there in Florida. And, and you know, it's, I think it's, it's completely pathetic because these kids are, it's just kids playing football, and these guys are just making so much money off of them. I, I, even I've seen in some reports they're, put, they're betting on pots that go up to about $30,000 for regular season games, and for the Super Bowl it was $75,000. This is completely outrageous. Now, like what you said that drug dealers, I guess some of the yeah. lower class are involved. Um, what do you think gets them to be involved with this? I mean, it's a way of easy income without really doing much. They, they feed off the kids and they use the kids as money. It, they just see it as a source of income and money. Now, what are some details about how they're betting on it exactly, Alex? Well, aside from betting on the games, like picking the winners, and uh, there's also like, people that will pay parents to like, put their kids on a certain team so their team would win and they can bet on the team the whole season and make a ton of money. Because they know if one kid's good, that can change a whole team. So they're betting on, or they're, they're giving money, like an initial like down payment to a parent, and then uh, they're ending up getting it back when the, the kid performs on the team. Wow. I, I, I just find this really funny. This is just completely outrageous. I've never seen anything like this before. Um, okay, next up. Uh, you know, this whole thing about the Ohio State coach, Trestle, resigning in the midst of corruption. So tell me a little bit about this, Jesse. Okay, well, since 2002, players would trade memorabilia that they had from the team, like jerseys and helmets and cleats and stuff like that, to a tattoo parlor, and they would trade the memorabilia for tattoos, and that was illegal. You can't do that. They were supposed to keep the memorabilia, and the coach actually lied to the investigators about the specifics of the um, corruption, and now it blew up, and the coach had to resign, and it's just a bad situation. So what, what, did exa what did Trestle do exactly, Alex? Um, well, Trestle signed a NCAA compliance form in September saying he had no knowledge of any illegal activity going on with his players, even though he has emails from an ex-player uh, saying that there are, are, are there, that there are players that are uh, trading away jerseys for tattoos. Trestle, uh, w when it was found out that he was lying, he initially got a two-game suspension, later up to a five-game suspension, and now in the, in the midst of all this, he's he resigned, and that's really a blow for Ohio State because he was uh, 106 and 22 in his years there. Yeah, he's been a great coach. So, what do you guys think he's going to do? Or what do you think Ohio State's going to do about this coaching deficit now? I mean, Ohio State's—they're in a huge hole right now. Their star quarterback is also sp suspended for the first five games of the season. Now he wants to go into the NFL supplemental draft in July and not even return to Columbus. He was recently found driving with a uh, suspended license. Things, things are really not going well for Ohio State. Now, I think this kind of plays into the whole topic now of should NCAA, NCAA athletes get, pay, get paid? Now, perhaps if they had the money, they wouldn't have to trade in all their gear, all their memorabilia. Um, so what do you guys think about, about this? Should they get paid or should they continue to play for nothing? Uh, I personally think that if you're paying, like, tens of thousands of dollars a year for an education. You also want to play a sport. I mean, they're the occasional uh, like player that are really good, and they'll get drafted and make millions in the NFL. But for those who don't make it to the NFL, they're, sp they're spending $40,000 a year plus whatever like they, they have to pay for football. So it is a lot of money you're uh, spending just to play football. So I'm not really sure whether they should get paid or not, but it's certainly like a very good topic that even uh, other coaches are discussing. I really think the players should get paid. I mean, the schools make millions off them. There's all the TV deals, all the bowls they get into. I mean, it's really, they need to get walking around money and meals and stuff. And they should get paid not a lot, not millions, like professional athletes, but somewhere a couple thousand dollars for the season should be good. Yeah, I agree with you, Jesse. Well, that's it for now. Don't go anywhere. There's more rain delay after the break.
Welcome back to the rain delay. Now, changing gears, guys, we're going to talk about the upcoming NBA draft. So let's talk about the draft order. Who are you guys' top five picks? Well, the not really the consensus, number one, but most people in the mock drafts have Kyrie Irving out of Duke, the point guard. People compare him to Chris Paul. He's going to be a very good point guard, and he's going to be good in this year in the NBA for years to come. Also, another maybe number one pick, Derek Williams out of Arizona. He had a great NCAA tournament, and his stock blew up. He's about 6'9". He's a good swing man, and he could be a small forward or a power forward, so there's something to look out for there. Um, well, the Cleveland Cavaliers had the first pick, and Minnesota Timberwolves had the second. And uh, just in the news a few days ago, uh, Ricky Rubio, the, who the Timberwolves actually drafted two years ago, but never, he never went to the team. He's a point guard. He's fantastic. He's uh, Spanish. He played in the Spanish League, excuse me. Uh, he's going to the team now. So if uh, Cleveland does draft Kyrie Irving, who a lot of people, as Jesse said, think is the number one pick, then uh, Derek Williams should be another fantastic addition to the Minnesota Timberwolves because now they'll have a good point guard in Rubio, a great power forward in Williams, and a fantastic all-star uh, center in Kevin Love. So who do you guys think has the most potential in this draft? I mean, if you want to look at potential, there's a guy from the Czech Republic. He's about 6'11", very athletic. His name is Jan Wiesley. Not really known here in America, but he's a star in the Czech Republic. He's young. He's about 18. And he he's, could be a very good player in this league. And he's 6'10", 6'11", great wingspan, athleticism. He's got the whole package. I'm going to say Kyrie Irving. He, didn't, uh, he was injured a lot at Duke this season, so he didn't play that many games. So I don't think a lot of people have seen him you know, play uh, to his full potential. And I think, and he's still the number one pick overall on a lot of people's big boards. So, I mean, if he's number one and didn't play that much this season, that says a lot about the kids. So I think, uh, you know, he definitely has a lot of potential. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that, Alex. Also, um, your sleeper pick, who's that going to be this year? I mean, there's a lot of guys to pick here all up and down the board. I'm actually going to go with Kawhi Leonard. Out of a, he's, they were good this year in San Diego State, but it's a small school, not really known. He's a good, he's 6'7", a swing man. He could dunk, he could shoot, he's got the whole, he's good. He got the package. Uh, I'm going to stay you know, in that same conference and say uh, Jimmer Fredette from BYU. Uh, the guy's a great shooter. Uh, I believe led the NCAA in points per game with around 28. He's a fantastic shooter we saw this season. He can shoot the three from almost anywhere on the court. And uh, I mean, it, he might have a bit of a problem like adjusting to the bigger, faster players in the NBA. But I think once he gets used to that, if he can knock down threes from any part of the court, you know, he should be able to do that in the NBA too. Now, I know both of you guys have your number one picks in mind, I assume, and I know. Who could you compare them to the most in the NBA now? I mean, Kyrie Irving is a, literally a, br a blueprint of Chris Paul. Plays like him, he's quick, he could shoot, he could pass, got great intangibles. A lot of scouts look for, Ky see Chris Paul in Kyrie Irving. Uh, Jesse, I completely agree with you, but I'm going to go with uh, last year's number one pick, John Wall from Kentucky. I th he's uh, just like uh, Wall Irving is very fast, point guard, fantastic hands, great intangibles like you said. And I, But I do think turnovers could be a bit of a problem for Irving, especially as a rookie. And, and I think Wall had that same situation this whole year. But uh, Wall's going to be a fantastic player, already is, and er I think Irving will follow the same path. Now, we know every year we have that one guy in the draft, or actually many guys in the draft, who are chosen and just crash. Who do you think is going to be that or those overrated players this year? Actually, Alex, no disrespect, but I think Jimmer is going to be very overrated this year. I think he was good in college, but I just don't see his game translating to the pro level. Yes, he could shoot, but so can a lot of guys in the NBA. I don't think he's quick enough. I don't think he plays good enough defense, and I just don't see what he could do in the NBA? Uh, I'm gonna, I would say uh, Tristan Thomas, uh, Tristan Thompson, excuse me, power forward from Texas. Uh, he's a great defensive player, don't get me wrong, but offensively he's not really you know, up to speed with like the rest of the power forwards. He's still one of the best uh, to declare for the draft, but until he gets his offensive game going, I don't think he has a lot going for him. So as you guys know recently, actually, yeah, very recently, Shaquille O'Neal just retired. How do you think the Heat can Celtics. bring their team back. The Celtics. Uh, the Celtics. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, the, the Celtics. I mean, he he was hurt most of the season. His Achilles was messed up. His calf was messed up. In his old age, he didn't really provide much for the team this year. So I don't think it'll be much of a big deal. And I think they'll be OK without him. Alex, how do you think the Celtics are going to bounce back? I completely agree with Jesse. Like, like uh, Jesse said, he was injured. He's. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's one of the best players to ever played the game, one of the best centers, absolutely. And uh, unfortunately, he was injured a lot of this season. 
and he didn't really have that great of an effect. He was injured. He's old. So uh, I think he had a fantastic career, but I don't think they'll be missing much next season. Now, which team, uh, I guess, which top team do you think in the league, in the NBA right now, is really going to be relying on their draft picks this year? I mean, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go with the Utah Jazz. After trading away a superstar last year to the Nets and Deron Williams, they've got the third pick. They're looking at Brandon Knight out of Kentucky, a point guard, to replace Deron Williams. They they really have a lot relying on the draft. They actually got a very high pick. It was they were supposed to go number six, but the lottery gave them the third pick. So there's a lot of pressure on them to deliver in the draft this year. Jesse, I completely agree with you. Not only do the Jazz have the third pick, they also have the 12th. So they have two lottery picks. Uh, like you said, they traded away Darren Williams to the Nets. So I think they could definitely use Brandon Knight, another point guard, to make up for the loss. Um, and, I mean, having the 12th pick is also really good because uh, one of the top 10 picks, or potential top 10 picks, could certainly fall right into their hands in number 12. And uh, with having two draft picks in the top 12 is certainly a good way to you know, bolster your team, get some young talent. Yeah, well, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens this year. Well, sorry, guys, we're out of time. Stick around, because up next, we have Nick DeSico and Justin Avedisian with more Rain Delay. Welcome back to the Rain Delay. I'm Nick DeSico, and this is my, my friend Justin Avedisian. Um, Justin, we got to talk about the NFL lockout and how it's presenting problems for both owners and players. Um, what, what do you stand on this? Like, where do you stand on it? Uh, I'm definitely with the owners on this one. Um, I just think, you know, players getting too greedy, then they just make way too much money. Well, you see that, but the players are out there, the ones getting, there, getting hurt. I mean, yeah, I mean, owners are definitely collecting way more, and the players are out there. There's, they're risking their lives, partly. Yeah, but when it comes down to it, you know, the, the equipment's, the game's not the same. The uh, equipment gets a lot better. Guys aren't getting hurt as much. And they're getting paid a lot more, so it's just not right. Oh, yeah, but you can also make the argument that almost, what is it, like 80% of the players are living paycheck to paycheck? I mean, that's just yeah. it's just not fair to 85% of players. Yes, obviously there's that one player that makes millions and millions of dollars, but there's also the average player that only makes a couple hundred thousand a year. Yeah, that's, that's still a lot. But, um, you know, the, the players, they just mostly spend it on nonsense, like, you know, ridiculous cars, houses, and just stuff that's just not necessary. And the bottom line is they're just playing a game. Well, that's true. I mean, they are, they don't exactly save the money the best way. But, I mean, they are getting hurt. They're doing all this stuff. And it's for the fans. And they're always going to be on the fans' perspective. They're always going to be on the fans' side. You know what I'm saying? But um, the, the NFL, it makes $9 billion a year. I mean, I think they can definitely share that equally, if not at least 60-40. I don't see why a compromise can't be made. Yeah, but, you know, in the end of the day, it's really – as much as you don't want to say you want to think of it as sports, it's really a business. Owners just trying to make the most money they can. So Yeah, I know from like the fans' perspective, it's a lot of money and everything. Also, the players want more money because they're out there. They think they're doing the hardest work. And the owners have their say because they are putting up the stadiums and they're doing all that stuff. They, It's all fair to say for who, but I really think the players actually deserve a little bit more because they really are the ones risking everything they can for those teams. Yeah, you know, the players do deserve, you know, a decent amount of money, but owners are still at the, at the end of the day. They're the ones putting out the stadiums, paying not just the players, but everyone on the staff, you know, and just and responsible for a team. One bad season could lead to uh, an owner making a lot, mis lot, lot, lot less money one year to the other. That is true. I mean, you know, I just, I just think there's so much money involved in the NFL that I just don't know why there really can't be a compromise made. I mean – it is $9 billion after all. If you say I can't split $4.5 billion with you and you can't have the other half, I'm saying you're out of your mind. I mean, there has to yeah. be a compromise to be made. Yeah, but we're, uh, we're, uh, this is a tough part. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens. All right, well, you also got to think about the fans and the uh, tickets being increased year by year. I mean, season ticket holders at Giant City, when they have to pay like 20000 just to bid for the t tickets for season? Yeah, yeah. Pr prices are really rising a lot, especially in this economy. The owners aren't going to see... Uh, as many fans, as many dedicated fans that want to go to each game, but that's how it is. I mean, if, if I'm an owner, I'm not getting any sympathy from the fans right now. I yeah. mean, they're just, they're, we're owning this, we're owning that, we're raising taxes on this, we're raising prices on that. And the fan, I mean, it's for the, the business world that's enjoying football games now. 
It's not the average guy that takes his son or daughter to a football game, yeah. tries to have a f- uh, nice family day with the kids. It's basically business and business working together, and they're not letting the average public of the, you know, of the, uh, well, the public exist in the whole football scene. Yeah, it's a shame, but uh, it's the way it's, it's the way it is now. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, it kind of feels like it's not fair exactly to the fan and also to the players, but. The world does have to realize that it is a business, and they do have to like, they have to kind of give owners a little bit more respect, especially putting up the stadiums and putting up all the money for everything. I mean, they do have to pay every single person in there. Yeah, it's it, it, it's hard for either way to even get aside. You know, just the fans while they're really looking at the owners so bad. I think is you know this is one of the most important times of the year besides the draft. You know, everyone's looking forward to the free agency. Oh and yeah, you know, that's right. Exactly. That free a lot of people look forward to that because you know, uh, let's say you're, let's say you're a Colts fan. And you know, you know Peyton wants somebody, like a veteran wide receiver, to help him out. And now we can't, can't, can't teams can't negotiate. Yeah, and you know what? That also goes with the new drafted players, the rookies. They can't even even go to the team facilities and practice with those older players to develop a relationship and bond with. Them. I mean, it, it, it's tough for rookie players as well. I mean, coming in from colleges, knowing, all right, I'm gonna. I'm going to be in the NFL, dreamed as a kid that I'm going to yeah. be there. And now, right now, you can't even do that while you succeeded and did everything you were asked and told to do. Well, yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard. Yeah. But we're going to take a short break on the rain delay. And coming up is the Wayne Hills football preview next year. Welcome back to the rain delay. Uh, we're going to talk about last year and the Wayne Hills football team and how they triumphed in the state championship football game. Justin, what was your take on the state championship game last year? Uh, you know, it was pretty crazy. Uh, obviously, we had a rough game. We were winning the whole game, and then it just came down the field, took the lead, and uh, thank God we had a well, kick. Uh, Old Depends quarterback. Uh, I'm sorry, his name is Devin Fuller. Devin Fuller, exactly. Uh, he he was a great athlete. Yeah. Very unstoppable kid. I mean, we held him to 66 yards running, yeah. but he had a touchdown, one throwing, one passing. Th- they were a very good team, but Troy and Brian's play is one. Oh, of the, yeah. That's, it's a that's, miracle in the yeah. play of Wayne Hills football. It's one of the greatest but, plays in high school history. High school history, and maybe even in state. But anyway, let's uh, go to the new f- and upcoming year of football. Um, Justin, what do you have for your offensive starters this year for the Wayne Hills Patriots? Uh, well, we'll go with the pretty boys first. Uh, the pretty boys, okay. Wide receivers, we got uh, Andrew Monahan. He's he's a pretty tough kid, you know, for a wide receiver, I guess. <laughs> Not yeah. bad hands, pretty quick. Uh, we got Mike Garino, he's a real speedster. Pretty yeah. good hands. If, you know, if he learns, you know, run routes correctly. And you know, he, for his size, not the biggest kid, but he, he's pretty physical for his frame. Yes, he's got a lot of heart to kid. Yeah. I mean, he, he really does try his hardest. And Monahan, you know, sometimes he gets a little bit, out Chippy. of his way, yeah. yeah. But yeah. you know what? At all, in all of it, he really tries his hardest, and he just has the heart of a champion. Yeah. Um, also, what about Jeff Jean Jack? He's a new kid on the block right now. He he's yeah. trying to develop his way into the way. Yeah, he's he's really showed the coaches, you know, on the JV level, he can get the job done if he just really, you know, focuses, and practices hard. I think you'll be able, to, you could see him in the starting lineup. I mean, what is he like six six three six oh, four? Yeah. Kid's and you huge, know what? Yeah. He he. He wins track meets like it's his job. Yeah. I mean, the kid's very, very fast. He has great hands. I mean, he does need to get a little bit more physical for the, for the football yeah, for the game. Size, yeah. But, you know, if he does become a little bit more physical, I think he can be a dominant wide receiver. Yeah. And you know what? Kevin Olsen might like that. Oh, yeah. And Troy uh, Olsen, he's also going to be throwing to Troy, no doubt. I mean, well, how much you have to say about the kid? I mean, well, Troy, I mean, I know, talent, so. I know the kid. He's like, what, 5'8"? I mean, if I would that, say if that on a good yeah, day, you know. Pairs of socks. <laughs> well, I mean, the kid, he has heart. He, he'll he try and win everything out. He doesn't let anybody try to knock him down. He's yeah. going to beat you every time that you want, that he wants to be there. 
Anyway, uh, and we let's also got uh, oh, last right. last receiver. We got I'm gonna go with Eric Moskal. Oh, you know, new face on kid, the block. You know, kid shows he has he's got good, he's got good skill. You know, plays baseball for me, so I know he's he's, he's very athletic. And uh, if he really puts his mind to it, I think he's a be a pretty productive player. You're right. I mean, he he's a young kid. He's got to develop some new skills. But you know, what? he's got great route running ability, great hands, and a good football mind. Um, let's move on to the other side of the ball, though. Defensive starters, like. On our defensive line, there's Joe Lane, uh, Jason, your brother, and you as well, and Roberto Alvarez, and also Matt Greenfield. Um, Matt, he's a very good football player. He's very smart, very fast. He's a good athlete. And we're think, uh, the football coaches are trying to think that maybe he might have to become an uh, outside linebacker. Eh. Do you think he can be all right with, at that position? Yeah, Matt, Matt's going to be all right wherever he goes, but... You know, I really like him at the end. He's, de- he's definitely not the biggest lineman you'll ever see. but No, but he's got a heart, man. He's, yeah, got, he's an he's, athlete. He's really quick, uses his hands well. And, you know, he'll get the job done. And I'm going to go back to the uh, finish off the offensive starters. Oh, go um, right ahead. Running backs, you know, we're going to see Dom. Dom, you know, anybody who's followed us over the years knows Dom's skill. Yeah, very he's fast, a captain. very strong. We're going to see him on defense, too, playing linebacker. Yep. Troy's going to get his fair, fair share of carries. I mean, kids athletic like he's not anything you've seen that. And also, I'm going to go with Justin Beveridge. You know, not many people know him, but, you know, the kid runs very he, hard. He does run hard. I mean, he had a touchdown against Bergen Tech, I believe. Uh, yeah. I think it was like a 10-yard, 20-yard, something, like that, yard, something yeah. like that. But he broke a lot of tackles during that. I mean, yeah, really he was a eyebrows. very, very, very hard runner. He's, yeah. he's got a heart for a kid his size. I mean, he tries his best. And we got uh, Kevin Olsen at quarterback. I mean, six, uh, well. whatever he is, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, you know, I don't, know how, I don't know how much he weighs. <laughs> Probably a good 185, huge, maybe. Huge, yeah, great frame, great arm. You know, it, and so you know when you look at him, you don't think he's going to evade pressure that great, but he definitely. No, he, he has that hidden of of athletic ability. And he even showed his wide receiving skills when like, catching a touchdown against Valley in the playoffs. Um, and now, if I didn't know that was coming, I, I would have had a stroke. I think, man, that yeah. that was just impressive. And uh, fullback, you're going to see uh, probably my host right here, Nick DeSico. You know. Not, He's the not toughest, too shabby. Not, not, not too the shabby. toughest kid you'll ever meet. Well, I'll definitely oh. get the job done. Now I got I got to disagree with you there, man. I thought I was. I think I'm pretty good. I know I broke my knee running down on a kickoff, but I think I'm a decent kid. Anyway, all right, going back to the defensive side, uh, the linebacking core. If not Matt Greenfield, I believe there will be another senior there stepping in for it, Christian Graff. Yeah. I mean. Kid's got a heart. He knows what he's doing. I mean, he's not the most athletic kid, but he is, he does know what he's doing out there. So, I mean, he's a good alternative. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm not going to argue with you, but the kid's got, especially Graf, he's, you know, he's got such a knowledge of the game. I yeah. mean, knows every formation, knows what plays are going to come at him, and it's just a matter of if he works hard enough. All right. Well, um, let's move over to the safety position real quick. Um, Mike Garino. Uh, we talked about him a little bit for the uh, – Wide receiver, but as a defender, I mean, he's very fast, as we talked about. He, yeah. But he does have a football mind. I mean, he knows when to cover people when he has to. Yeah. I think he's he'll be fine over there. And also Troy and Andrew Monahan are the corners. corners. Yeah, yeah, they're just, they're just so athletic. They love the game, and just true competitors. So it should yeah. be all right. It's gonna be good. I think you know, as a whole, that we'll be fine. But yeah. it's gonna be a good year, I think, and I think we'll be able to take care of our business. Let's hope so. Well. Justin, I'm sorry, we're running out of time. On behalf of Josh Mordkoff, Justin Avdizian, Jesse Freeman, Alex Green, and Nick DeSico, uh, thank you for joining us on the rain delay, and see you in September.